good day everyone and a very warm welcome to all our viewers joining our live chat today courtesy of specialist hospital kalyanagar bangalore our discussion today will be on the recent and upcoming infection mucomycosis or black fungus uh, we have with us today dr sharath consultant and ent surgeon specialist hospital who is our expert uh, on our live session and who will help us understand this disease burden we are facing at the moment welcome dr sharath hello uh, so uh, can you help us understand what is mucomycosis or black fungus and what causes black fungus and how does it form uh, yeah so mucomycosis is a invasive fungal infection invasive i mean it doesn't remain contained to the tissue it affects it has a capacity to erode the structures in front of it like for example there is a bone it can erode the bone and go to the adjacent tissue it has a capacity to invade into a blood vessel and uh, reach a distant tissue so that what we mean by invasive it can erode any tissue which is coming in the way and spread to the adjacent structures or even a distant structure so this fungus belongs to a family called mucoraceae it is commonly found in the soil in the plants uh, rotten vegetables or a uh, decaying vegetative matter so the spores are there in the environment which we breathe in and breathe out uh, so it is infamously called the black fungus because of the black eschar it leaves behind once it affects a tissue it uh, cuts off the blood supply of the tissue the tissue becomes necrotic and then uh, it turns black we call it as a black eschar so this is how it gets the name uh, black fungus thank you sir uh, was this condition earlier existing or is this something new yeah it is there since uh, long long time uh, in my personal experience we have operated uh, two cases in this hospital uh, in the past uh, two years that is before the covid started uh it is not something uh, which is new it is there since long time just that in this uh, situation it has been declared as an epidemic because there was a sudden rise in uh, the number of uh, cases overall uh, till now in india around 40000 approximately cases have been uh, registered uh, so this is something which is uh, there since before but now it has been declared as, as an epidemic since the number of cases have uh, increased um can all, who can get black fungus and uh, are there any high risk patients and also the age groups that can be affected or can even a normal person get black fungus so who are at uh, risk of getting an uh, mucomycosis black fungal infection in the current scenario the biggest risk factor is acquiring a covid-19 infection especially the delta variant uh, strain is uh, uh, probably has a correlating factor to uh, to get an individual infected with mucomycosis otherwise the other comorbidities is diabetes mellitus and uh, the third one suspected is indiscriminate use of uh, steroids these three collectively can give a biggest uh, risk of acquiring a mucomycosis infection so what are these uh, three factors doing uh, your covid-19 infection diabetes mellitus and increased use of steroids three things collectively commonly what it is doing is reducing the immunity once a uh, covid-19 uh, infection affects your nasal mucosa uh, the immunity of the nasal mucosa is hampered in general the body's immunity uh, immunity is also hampered so normal uh, individual will have a good defense mechanism against this fungal infection we might breathe in and breathe out the spores regularly but it doesn't have an uh, opportunity to infect us because we have a good defense mechanism against this fungus in case of acquiring a covid-19 infection the nasal immunity reduces the virus gets a upper hand of infecting the mucosa and over that we have diabetes mellitus which causes uh, uncontrolled sugar levels the covid-19 infection per se itself causes hyperglycemia along with that diabetes mellitus and also use of increased uh, steroids or improper monitoring of uh, sugar levels during the treatment or uh, long term use of steroids might uh, will definitely cause a increase in uh, blood sugars reducing the immunity in general immunity and then hence for the uh, fungus gets a upper hand and it can infect uh, the individual 
Apart from this, the other risk factors could be uh, cancer patients who is on immunosuppressive drugs, people who have undergone organ transplantations, uh, malnutrition, and even uh, it could be people who are undergoing uh, dialysis. Basically, it is the immunocompromised state which will cause an infection. A normal healthy individual who has a good immunity uh, won't be affected with this fungal infection. Coming to the age group which is affected is uh, the same age group which is uh, which the COVID infection is affecting in this way. It is uh, the young adults, middle and the old age. There has also been a few, very few cases reported in a pediatric age group which is uh, uh, caused a mucor infection. So here the risk factors are simple. It is COVID-19 infection, diabetes mellitus and indiscriminate use of steroids. Thank you, sir. Uh, and also, what are the common signs and symptoms? And are there any life-threatening symptoms and signs that uh, we need to be made aware of? Yeah, the symptoms we can divide into early and uh, late. The early symptoms could be as simple as a headache, facial pain or swelling. It could be a nasal block or stuffiness inside the nose. It can be even uh, eye swelling, eye uh, redness or... Uh, pain inside the eyes so all these typical uh, symptoms are typically uh, unilateral i mean uh, one sided and uh, it is the pain is considered to be moderate to severe it is not a vague pain or a mild pain which you would sit and think that maybe if i had this pain yesterday maybe it is that i had covid infection it will usually not be like that it is a symptom which is continuous persistent and severe which would uh, not allow you to do your uh, day to day activities regularly uh, there could be late symptoms, late symptoms as in when the uh, infection has already spread to an extent, giving rise to more uh, uh, difficult uh, situations. The symptoms would be uh, altered uh, or blackish discoloration of the skin over the face or it could be in the palate that is the inner surface of the upper jaw. It could be loosening of the tooth or falling of the tooth. Uh, let's say the fungal infection has entered the brain, it can also present with uh, altered sensorium, loss of consciousness. It can also present with uh, a fixed eye. That is, your eye is not mobile. It cannot move right, left, up and down. It's the, we call it as complete ophthalmoplegia. Uh, and there could be ptosis. Ptosis in the sense drooping of the eyelid, upper eyelid. The patient won't be able to lift the eyelid up and have a good vision can also directly present with uh, loss of vision these are wide range of symptoms but usually uh, typically it is uh, one-sided and it is something which is excruciating and severe uh, once a person experiences these symptoms what precautions do the patient or the uh, person affected with this condition what precautions they need to take and when is it the right time to meet the doctor is it also a curable uh, condition? Yeah, so when to meet a doctor as early as possible. The symptoms which is mentioned, if you are experiencing any one of this, you need to meet a doctor as soon as possible. Uh, you can meet your ENT doctor. What, you were, what would your ENT doctor do? He would uh, take a brief clinical history, a clinical examination, followed by a diagnostic nasal endoscopy. That is an endoscopy of the nose to find out or to, to see if there is any uh, tissue which is uh, suggesting of mucor mycosis. Uh, giving the situation uh, where the symptoms where the patient uh, presents early, where the patient has picked up the disease early and has come to you, the diagnostic nasal endoscopy may be normal, completely normal, which doesn't mean that uh, it is not mucor. So we'll have to go for further investigations like a KOH test where the secretions or the tissue from the nose is sent for uh, microbiological evaluation which might uh, guide us uh, regarding uh, if it is a fungal infection and what kind of fungus is seen in that tissue. Secondly, to know the extent of the disease or even to be more sure if the KOH comes negative and even the uh, diagnostic nasal endoscopy is negative, we might have to go for few scans like a contrast MRI of the sinus orbit and the brain. Uh, sometimes we might require a venogram or a, a angiogram of the brain. and uh, a screening CT scan for the sinus to know the extent of the disease. So once the extent of the disease is known, uh, a surgical treatment and a medical management can be planned.
surgical treatment basically involves debridement let's say the disease is confined only to the sinus it requires a sinus debridement let's say the disease has progressed into the eyes it might re require a debridement of the eyes depending on whether the vision is there or the vision is lost let's say the disease is uh, behind the eyeballs impending to get into the brain that might warrant a removal of a eyeball let's say the infection has spread into the heart palate where you can see uh, in the oral cavity you see blackish discoloration of the palate and it is uh, spread to an extent the patient might require a maxillectomy where we'll have to remove a portion of the jaw and then the surgical treatment is followed by uh, medical management that which is uh, using antifungal uh, injections antifungal medications can be used even uh, intraoperatively to clean the sinus cavities the multiple uh, drugs which is available like uh, uh, amphotericin uh, posconazole and uh, isovaconazole so there will be involvement of uh, multiple specialties like involvement of the oculoplasty or the ophthalmologist involvement of the maxillofacial surgeon neurosurgeon pathologist radiologist even sometimes a psychiatric evaluation is required because the disease extent is so much it might involve removal of an organ in order to save a life so it involves a multidisciplinary approach and uh, it is a long uh, treatment which includes both surgery and the medications cure uh, yeah it is definitely curable uh, depends on the extent of the disease the earlier we detect it the easier is the cure sometimes the surgery would do the 90% of the job and uh, the treatment is completed by using uh, antifungal medications uh, thank you sir you uh, gave us the cue uh, of uh, early and the early detection which will lead to uh, curable of uh, the the whole process uh, but in time uh, if it's not treated what can the complications be if not treated that's what the extent of the disease will increase maybe if you presented early the treatment would be simple as a radical uh, sinus debridement and medications let's say it gets into the eyes and it is not savable we'll have to remove the eyes or better exenteration we call it as and uh, and also the morbidity increases the more the extent of the surgery goes in uh, the more uh, suffering for the patient and then follow ups and checkups for a patient who has been affected by mucomycosis uh, what are the is it a contagious uh, disease or and should the patient be isolated uh, not really it is doesn't spread from one person to person as you know the person can acquire this because from the environment the fungal spore is there everywhere which we cannot avoid a normal individual probably me and you are breathing in and breathing it out the fungal spores but since i have a good immunity against it there is no risk factors for me i am free of the disease person who is having a comorbidities will acquire the infection it doesn't uh, spread from one person to other person it is not contagious thank you sir that is reassuring uh, after how many days of uh, recovery from covid or during that phase uh, one can see uh, signs of mucomycosis normally it is uh, between uh, 15 to 45 days that is uh, the during the, from the date of uh, acquiring covid infections probably 5% of people uh, acquire the infection even within uh, within those 15 days and for around the 5% might acquire it after the 45 days and once treatment has been uh, given to the patient and uh, it has been cured is it uh, possible for it to recover again patient being uh, treated uh, depends uh, let's say we treat a pa patient of mucomycosis we consider the patient to be treated only after following up, up uh, till the day at, uh, day of 100 once the treatment is complete and he is with all the antifungals uh, it is very less likely to acquire the infection back again uh and also how expensive is the treatment and do we have them readily available at the moment uh treatment is uh, quite ex expensive uh, based on the use of uh, the antifungal agents there are different antifungal uh, agents liposomal emulsion uh, deoxycholate the prices varies uh, right now in, in in the initial stages there was a scarcity of the injections also 
right now it has been all uh, channelized and we are getting it through the government portal uh, a single individual uh, would normally require average of 6 injections per day uh, probably up to 2 to 3 weeks uh, so expenses well is quite uh, quite a bit uh, what would be the side effects uh, post treatment of mucomycosis again saying the side effects is less because if is less if you come in early and you get it treated early the more the extent of the disease there will be morbidity morbidity sufferings like we have to remove the eyeballs will will be losing the vision and uh, other side effects could be when we remove a half of the jaw there will be issues with uh, swallowing we'll, we can give a temporarily something called as an obturator which will prevent the food particles going into the nasal cavity since that is both connected now uh, unfortunately we cannot do a, a plastic surgery or a, a rehabilitation or anything with to cover it immediately because we need to monitor or uh, do the surveillance whether the disease is coming back so something of that sort can be done only after 3 uh, to 6 months means the it is completely disease free uh, since you mentioned uh, follow ups and to prevent disease recurring how many follow ups would a patient need uh, after treatment a patient uh, requires a follow up up to 3 months that is 100th day probably we would be doing uh, uh, endoscopies every 10th day to s- detect even any slightest uh, recurrence or uh, uh, any changes in the mucosa which is suggesting of uh, the fungal infection uh, what is it uh, about losing eyesight is it a myth or truth that uh, patients affected with this condition can lose eyesight definitely uh, it can be lost the eye vision loss can be either because of sp- uh, spread from the sinus into the adjacent structure which is eyeball sometimes the infection can spread through the brain uh, through the blood vessel from the sinus area directly to the artery which is supplying the eyes and uh, there will be blockage of the th- or there will be a, f- a fungal thrombus which is blocking the blood vessel supplying the eye and the patient might lose the eye that is uh, quite common in uh, mucormycosis thank you sir for the elaborate uh, explanation for our many questions that our viewers would uh, benefit from uh, our final word would be your takeaway message to our viewers for this condition that is uh, very acute and uh, rising in our country so take away message has been the same since past two years sanitize safe distancing and wearing a mask what will these three things prevent it will prevent you getting a covid-19 infection which we know is the major risk factor for a individual to acquire mucormycosis unfortunately let's say you acquired the covid-19 infection and you are diabetic the next best thing what you can do is to be in good care from your physician so that uh, you would take a proper treatment of that and your sugar levels are controlled during the treatment and you are using a steroid uh according to the guidance of the physician throughout the process your uh, sugars are monitored and controlled let's say for unforeseen reasons your sugars are also not controlled you are a diabetic you acquired covid-19 infection and then you are at high risk of getting a mucormycosis infection so the next thing what you can do is to be in touch with a ENT surgeon or ENT specialist so that he would examine you regularly do a diagnostic nasal endoscopies he might suggest you to use a nasal dousing which is a salt water along with diluted uh, betadine to prevent any uh, fungal spores or anything getting contracted into the nasal mucosa so basically it requires good amount of care and surveillance if you are at high risk uh, so i would urge everyone to practice safe social distance wear a mask and then uh, sanitize your hands have a good glycemic control even the pre diabetics have a tendency or have a chances of acquiring this because of uh, the treatment which is involved and the disease which is involved here yeah thank you very much sir for your valuable time and uh, valuable comments uh, join us again soon for our next discussion which will be announced shortly thank you